If you can believe it, we are already in a new month, which as we know, means that a very special event is coming into town. And today we have a very special guest who's gonna tell you all about the big game. That and so much more right here on Pets on Parade. Good morning and welcome to Pets on Parade brought to you by 3TV. I'm Kelsey Dickerson with the Arizona Humane Society. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Now, if you are a fan of Toy Story like we all are, then you are definitely going to be a fan of this little cutie. Stacy's going to tell you all about how he came to AHS and how you can help little ones just like him in a bit. But first, before we introduce you to our adoptables in studio, let's meet Albert, who was thriving on his field trip. AHS volunteers Julie and Diane took little Albert for a fun day out of the shelter, and boy, was he a happy guy. He really lights up when exploring nature, in his sweater, of course, and we learned a lot of new things about Albert during his field trip. He rides well in the car, he's a great hiking companion, he knows no stranger, and he can sit, shake, and speak for a treat or a puppuccino. Outings like these allow us to learn more about a pet and update their online profile so we can find the best adopter for them. If you're interested in giving Albert a forever home, you can visit azhumane.org slash adopt. And now these little two, I think they're singing some Christmas carols because while the holidays are over, they came to us in December and their names definitely, definitely reflect that, right Lisa? That's right. Candy <laughs> is the female. She is the one there, the little white, more white. And this is Kane up in my lap. He is the male. They're little Australian shepherd mixes of some sort. They've each got one blue eye, one brown eye, and they're about 14 weeks old. These guys um, were picked up by our field department uh, in an animal cruelty kind of abandonment. They were found with in a wheelbarrow in an alley, believe it or not. I don't know how you could abandon this. It's just a whole lap full of cuteness. But uh, these guys have been in foster for weight gain. They had a little bit of tummy issues when they came in, a little bit of upset stomach. So they were treated with our Second Chance Animal Hospital. And then they went out to one of our lovely foster homes and look how good they turned out. Now they're all ready for adoption. So these two um, are great <laughs> examples of the age of animals that you, of puppies that you can bring to what we call our puppy parties. We have a training department and we have a trainer in with puppies you can bring your own puppy in and as long as they are fully vaccinated for a small donation i think it's 15 dollars or so you make a donation and there's other puppies that you can socialize your puppy with at that are the same age there there are volunteers and a trainer there to give you some tips how to make your dog more brave or less brave you might have that situation um, but it's just a great opportunity with other healthy dogs so that they can be um, socialized around animals that you might not otherwise have. azhumane.org slash training and you can get more information. You do have to sign up for the training so that we have the appropriate amount of puppies and you will need proof of vaccines so that we know all puppies there are healthy and can interact and get some great experience with one another. Oh my goodness, and you'll have a helper to help you out instead of a lap <laughs> full of puppies. So thank you so much for that, Lisa. And thank you, Candy and Kane. Now we're not quite in kitten season yet, knock on wood, but it's right around the corner, Stacy. and there are lots of ways for people to help our tiniest patients, right? There are lots of ways to help little kitties like Woody. Woody was found with his mom and four siblings, abandoned in a box outside of an animal clinic, and then he went on to foster to be treated for a little kitty cold and some Khaleesi, so he's all recovered now. And one of the great things about AHS is that there's a lot of ways to volunteer. I I know personally I've been a volunteer for I'm at my sixth year now and I volunteered at the bottle baby nursery and then when I had a lifestyle change I was able to come to the shelter uh, once every other week and then now I'm a foster so there's lots of ways to help out and for any lifestyle you can volunteer in any way 
um, you're not limited at all. So it's very rewarding and you're helping little sweeties like this one who's purring away and has been trying to climb up and give me hugs instead of facing the camera. <laughs> so yeah, all those ways are great ways to volunteer, even if you can pop in and do a shift. And so they're very flexible. And so uh, one way to find out all the great ways to volunteer is to go to um, azhumane.org slash volunteer. There's all kinds of ways. It's very user friendly, so there's no tricks to you know, becoming a volunteer and you're helping little babies like this one and it's very rewarding. They appreciate it for sure. So sweet. Their foster definitely did a great job with that litter. Thank you so much for that important information, Stacy. And if you're trying to figure out how to keep your energetic kid entertained over spring break, the Arizona Humane Society's Animal Doctors Spring Break Camp is the perfect plan for kids age 9 through 12. This STEAM early career discovery program focuses on the science of veterinary medicine, animal behavior, and the joy of pets. Campers will enjoy hands-on interactions with their animal teachers and learn about animal anatomy and physiology. Camp is March 13th through 17th, so visit AZ Humane Humane.org slash camps to learn more and to sign up your kids. And are you feeling lucky? Well, are you, Perry? Because I think this pup is very lucky and we're just as lucky <laughs> to have this one with us. Look at those adorable little kisses. Oh my god. I think goodness. I'm the lucky one here, right? <laughs> this is a sweet, sweet doggy. Lucky came to us, get this. Now, first of all, she's a two-year-old uh, female border collie mix. I think you can quite see the border collie in her. She came to us from a group called the Rainbow Friends Animal Sanctuary in the state of Hawaii. This dog is from Hawaii. And before you say, well, why are we bringing dogs from Hawaii to Arizona when we have problems of our own here with overpopulation? We do that too. We have another program called New Hope where we go to the county and we bring dogs in from the Maricopa County facility and actually all over the state of Arizona. It's just another umbrella program we have or our program reach out. This is where this doggy came from. In a lot of cases, we're bringing animals in that have medical issues, and that was the case with Lucky here. She does have an ear infection, which she's still being treated for, and she had a fractured lower incisor, which is uh, all extracted <laughs> now and doing well. And she's moaning here, showing her those big pearly whites that she has. She is a very, very soft doggy. And this is just an example of our program reach out of how shelters in the area help one another. It's not about the individual shelters, it's about the overall welfare of the animal population here. So come on down and get this doggy from Hawaii and go home and have some pineapple and Whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> She's climbing Volcano Perry right there. Uh, thank you so much for that, Perry. And in, in case you're not able to see as well on TV, we wanted to show Caspian's adoption photo because look at those eyes. He has a condition called heterochromia. But what is that, Brie? Oh, my goodness. So if you can see closely, this beautiful kitty has a blue eye and kind of like a yellow eye, but the eye, two eyes are not the same color. Um, Caspian came to us uh, extremely tiny, extremely uh, shy, and kind of scared, which I can't believe that right now in the studio. The studio has been really busy and loud, and this kitten just wants to go explore. About five months old, and she is no longer shy thanks to our behavioral team, which we appreciate so much. Uh, did you know that about 12,000 uh, 12, calls for service uh, from the, our, for our emergency animal? Uh, uh, it's just absolutely crazy how much they go out into the field and help these kittens and dogs and bunnies with hoarding cases, with cases of abuse, and of course, little shy ones like this little one here that was out in the field and just needed our help. But now you are good to go and ready to go up for adoption. Come see this sweet little kitten. Oh my goodness, Brie, what an absolutely gorgeous kitty. Thank you so much. And thank you to our field team who goes out there each and every day as well. And you are not going to believe this pup's glow up and how she's helping AHS make a national impact. We're gonna learn all about that after the break.
Welcome back to Pets on Prey. Now, as we all know, Arizona is gearing up for a very special event taking place a week from tomorrow. And viewers are really lucky because we have our own superstar who is going to be making her big TV debut nationally. I'm talking about none other than Phoenix, who is an AHS alum, who is going to rep be representing the Arizona Humane Society on Team Fluff of the Puppy Bowl. And joining me to talk all about this is Phoenix's adopter, Chelsea Porter, as well as none other than our very own Perry Fanzo, who happened to be a foster for this little girl. Thank you guys so much for joining mm -hmm. us today. Thank you for having us. Now, I mean, how can you resist this absolutely adorable <laughs> cutie? But we have to know, before we talk about her big TV debut, how did Phoenix, AKA Stevie Nicks, <laughs> AKA Nixie, now how did she come into your life, Chelsea? Well, Nixie came into my life because I was fortunately invited to the Compassion with Fashion event. and. Um, um, was not expecting dogs to be there, but luckily I'd already been considering adopting a family friend for my other rescue at home, Bella. And when I saw Nixie, just her loving personality, her cuteness, of course, <laughs> absolutely drew me in. I just knew she would fit in well with our family. Oh my goodness, as we can tell, she is such a magnetic character. <laughs> Those pictures are absolutely adorable. She has just melted right into your home perfectly. But when you learn that she was not only, of course, going to be a special part of your life, but she was going to be representing the Arizona Humane Society on the national on national TV in the Puppy Bowl, <laughs> what was your reaction? I was beyond thrilled. <laughs> uh, fortunately, I had grown up when I was younger, seeing the puppy bowl and um you know, it brings such a great awareness to all the adoptions that can occur throughout the um, states and these amazing dogs that need these great homes. And of course, as I've gotten to know Mi Nixie over the past few months, she is definitely going to be someone not to mess with <laughs> on the puppy bowl. She's on Team Fluff, but let me tell you, Team Rough better watch out. Oh my goodness, I think no one knows that better than Perry. <laughs> you fostered this little girl. She was the smallest in her litter, she was, but yep. she absolutely, there's a reason that she was picked for this. But for you, what does it mean that not only is she was able to have this great way to be able to represent AHS, but what it means for homeless pets, not just here in the Valley, but throughout the country? You know, when I, I actually was fostering the two siblings first, and Carrie, our foster manager, called me and said, hey, can you take a third? And I said, sure, and I went down and picked her up. And I will tell you, within a day, it, she was a very special dog. It was no surprise to me when the people in New York selected her to be on the Puppy Bowl because she just has, like Chelsea said, she has a magnetic personality. It was very, very clear. Even her siblings <laughs> treated her differently. Is she a diva? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. her siblings would kind of like even stay away from her, like, we're not messing with her. And she was by far the smallest. Her sister was twice her size. And I'll tell you, on the gridiron, she's going to be a tough little character because she doesn't put up with any crap from anybody. So. Absolutely not. Her sister at home is a solid 70 pounds, and yeah. this one runs the household. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's how it goes. You know, the smallest mm -hmm. ones run the house. But speaking of that, Chelsea, how has it been having her in your home these past few months? And what would you say to anyone out there who maybe is considering adopting, not sure yet? What would, what would you say to them, especially after adding this bundle of joy? Absolutely. Well, Nixie has been an amazing addition to our household. As I mentioned, she's got a sister, Bella, at home who's a boxer mix, and she's uh, 10 and a half. And just Nixie's, um, you know, loving and also, yes, very sassy, dramatic personality <laughs> has brought the life out of Bella, too. And they are just the best of friends. And, you know, for me, too, um, just seeing how much they adore each other, seeing Bella not being alone and once again having someone else in the home with her to play with has just been so great. And Nixie has just blended in with the family as a whole. We are definitely dog lovers. I think we have more than seven with my family combined. <laughs> and so she's got lots of cousins she gets to go play with, uh, nieces and nephews of, of, of mine. And um, luckily, you know, I grew up where my family, we adopted uh, from the Arizona Humane Society. And so I would absolutely tell anyone, if you're thinking about getting a dog, which is a huge life decision. So it definitely take some time like I had done. Um, adopting a dog you really should look into. I mean, they, they know that you are bringing them into a loving home. They know it's you who has rescued them. And the love that they give back is just, 
I don't know. I mean, I, I can't think of words to really ex explain how great that feels. Oh, my goodness. Well, we are so grateful for you for giving her such a loving home, Perry, for everything that you did to mm -hmm. ensure that she was healthy enough to be there. And Can I just we, say one more thing really course, quickly? Of course. Yeah, of course. You know, when you foster, one of the things is you, people say, well, how can you give them up? And it's, it's difficult giving them up, right? But more importantly, you always kind of wonder where are they going and what kind of a home are you going to? Within about a minute of meeting Chelsea, I think everybody that was there said, oh my God, she's going to a fantastic home. And I couldn't have handpicked a better home for her. So I'm, it was you. thrilling to actually do that adoption. And, uh, thank yeah. you so much. Oh mm -hmm. Chills. We love her dearly. Uh, <laughs> and we love you guys. Thank you so much. And you guys, we absolutely cannot wait for Nixie's big TV debut. We hope you can all tune in to Animal Planet's Puppy Bowl on Sunday, February 12th, starting at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you so much again for being here and giving this little girl a second chance at a great life. And if you guys are interested in following her, you can make sure to go on Instagram right now and follow at Nixie AZ and be able to keep up with her forever journey. Thank you both so much and thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to keep it tuned right here because we're going to introduce you to Adorable Little Sock after the break. <laughs> And welcome back to P.O.P. Now, just like humans, pets can get colds too. And while you can't tell a ton in this before picture of Lotus, she definitely has made a great recovery, right, Stacy? She has made a great recovery. Uh, she went into foster actually to uh, recover from conjunctivitis and for weight gain. So she's made leaps and bounds. Uh, She's very sweet. She's kind of handle sensitive at first, so it would be a good idea to just go slow with her. But once you have her in your arms, she's just purring away here. Uh, the great thing, uh, one of the many great things about AHS is that they do make sure that pets are safe when they're in the shelter. So there's a totally separate uh, isolation ward or ISO ward where uh, pets that have respiratory illnesses can be uh, separate from everyone else. and. Uh, it won't spread, then they're still, it's, you know, great ventilation and uh, sanitized and they, they have a whole crew to make sure that these cats, these animals actually are separate and that nothing spreads. So uh, Lotus definitely benefited from that and she's all healed up here and she's ready to come home to you, but she's so sweet and she's just purring away here. So once you gain her trust, that it'll be totally worth the love. Even though our kitties don't want to look at the camera today, they're right. making up for it in purrs and love. They are, they <laughs> so are. Thank you so much for that, Stacey. And I think we've all done laundry and inevitably lost just one sock that disappears and is never recovered. Well, if that's happened to anyone out there watching today, guess what? We have a solution for them, Lisa. Well, I have your solution, Sock. <laughs> that's her name. And as you can see, she found your sock. She's got it on. She just has one sock, which is, I'm sure, how she got her name. Um, she also would like to say aloha because just like Perry's last dog, she also came over on the airplane from Hawaii. So she's got a couple unique things about her. She's got the one sock. She's from Hawaii. What sort of conversation pieces are those going to be great when people come meet your dog? She is um, probably a little maybe pit bull mix. And we want to remind everybody, she is the softest, kindest thing. I know people have a lot of preconceived notions about pit bulls that are not true. You need to come to the shelter and meet the dog that you think might be good for you. She's 45 pounds. She's a lap dog. She is very calm, very sweet. So we always, I wish that we would just say on our breed sheets that they're just a dog, a 45 pound dog. We don't know what she is. She's got the label of pit bull, and I think some people avoid that. So uh, AHS does a lot of uh, legislation about that and advocacy for our restricted breeds. So if you are interested and want to be an advocate for dogs that may or may not be labeled as a pit bull, um, please visit our website at azhumanes uh, slash advocates, advocacy, and you can help us out with our legislative initiatives to make sure that there aren't breed restricted bans. 
Absolutely wonderful. That is a great reminder. And I'm sure all of our pity lovers out there agree. So thank you so much for that, Lisa. And earlier this week, the Arizona Humane Society partnered with Nourish Phoenix to provide free vaccinations to approximately 100 pets in need, thanks to Petco Love. A recent nationwide study found that almost 28% of households and pets experienced barriers to veterinary care, with finances being the most common reason. Nourish Phoenix and AHS know that pets are part of the family, and with support from AHS's Healthy Tales Mobile Veterinary Clinic and AHS sponsor Petco Love, Pet owners in Norris Phoenix community were able to get their furry family members the routine care they need to stay healthy and happy. We absolutely love that. And like we were talking about earlier, we know just how tiny and fragile our babies are when they come in, but seeing their before pictures never ceases to amaze me and Holly's litter is no different, Brie. So we met Holly's sibling earlier, Woody super tiny still, oh my goodness, just like my hands just can surround her, but I've been cuddling with her and loving on her and she's just wonderful. Um, she ended up having a special surgery because she had a hernia where her umbilical cord was attached. So when they went in to spay her, they fixed the hernia and she's happy and healthy now. Um, but something that's so important at our shelter is that the uh, little ones that come to us, wow, that was a true test there. Uh, <laughs> They come to us uh, super tiny. They need to be bottle fed. Uh, a lot of the time they don't have a mother. So that bottle feeding volunteering is so important because they need to be fed every couple hours. And we've got a beautiful nursery that you can help uh, volunteer with. Also, uh, you can also foster. And she really likes my little microphone right now, so I can't even imagine what this sounds like. But boy, <laughs> is she a wonderful little kitten and I bet she'd fit into your house. <laughs> She's definitely giving you a run for her money. She's going to be so much fun in her future forever home. Thank you for that, Bree. And now we have a pup who definitely has had quite the makeover. Look at that. Do, Carrie, please tell us how viewers at home can help Marshall. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes, Kelsey. He got his fresh mohawk just this morning. And uh, believe me, Marshall did not look as dapper when he first came into AHS as a stray dog. He was uh, picked up by our EAMTs and taken to one of our emergency animal clinics and then came to the Second Chance Animal Trauma Hospital where we realized that he has some broken toes. So this little guy has a cast on his foot and needs about six weeks of foster uh, time. So if you can open your heart to this little one, we will provide you with all of the supplies you need from an orthopedic crate to all of the medical care. He's a cutie and just wants to snuggle. He's got a lot of energy. He's used to being um, out and about. And so we just want to give him the opportunity to heal in a quiet environment. So please reach out to us, azhumane.org backslash foster today to take Marshall home to help him heal. Oh, and look at those little tail wags. We love it. Thank you so much, Carrie. And thank you, Marshall. And don't worry, we have a few adorable babies who are looking for the perfect forever homes, including Frankie, who has made quite a great recovery. We're going to introduce you to him after the break. Welcome back to Pets on Parade. Now, we're no strangers to pets that have URIs, but sometimes they can leave a lasting mark, Lisa. That's right. This is Frankie, and I wish we had purr vision because he is just purring, not worried about that camera right in his face. He is a little four-month-old, and he's got kind of a pointy face, a little oriental mix, all gray, short hair. Um, he had... Uh, urinary tract infection when he came in, which can affect their eyes. So he's got a little medical disclosure um, and a little bit of corneal scarring, which was checked out in our hospital and he got some drops, but everything is happy and healthy with him. You'll find out a little bit more about it on our medical disclosure. That is right. Thank you so much. And don't worry, bunny lovers. Perry's got you covered. Who is this cutie? <laughs> this is a two-year-old female. This is Midnight. And she was known as Surrender because they just couldn't afford to have her any longer. She came into us in January. And uh, we had her in quarantine for a while for, I think we talked about a couple weeks ago, the RHDV2 virus. She's not, she does not have it. She was just in quarantine for exposure. She is a super, super rabbit. You know, a lot of people don't know a lot about rabbits or critters. They know dogs and cats. They don't know critters. If you're thinking of getting one, there are things to know specifically about them, their housing, uh, their behaviors, their diet. 
If you have any questions and you want to learn more about rabbits or any other critters to go bring into your home, go to our website, azumaine.org slash behavior. And we promise there's a bunny there. She's just, she's, her name's Midnight for a reason. <laughs> and of course, who doesn't love family vacation movies? Please introduce us to Griswold, Stacy. This is Griswold. Griswold is so sweet. Uh, he's foster sibling of Woody and Holly. They are, or not litter mates, but they were raised together in a foster home. Uh, and donations, one thing to talk about with this is donations, how much donations help these little kitties uh, and all of our animals at AHS. And as a volunteer, I can definitely say all donations are used to help the animals. So yeah, uh, go on azhumane.org slash donation to see how you can help. Yes, that is absolutely right. They are critical to what we do. And so are all of you here in studio as well as everyone at home. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Remember to tune in to Nixie's big national TV debut a week from tomorrow. But before then, we'll see you right here on Pets on Parade a week from today.